Welcome to our lecture online. Again, to get a better understanding of what the coefficient of restitution is, we're going to build up a table here to represent this particular situation. Let's say we're dropping a ball from an initial height of 16 meters, and then in various situations, in the first case, the ball does not return back in the air, it stays right on the ground, then it bounces back 2 meters, 4 meters, 6 meters, all the way up to back 16 meters. And then what we're going to do here is calculate the coefficient of restitution, the ratio of the final kinetic energy relative to the initial kinetic energy right here before and after the collision, and the coefficient of restitution squared. Now we know that the ratio of the final to the initial energy is going to be proportional to the ratio of the final to the initial height. This row here will be easy to fill out. If the ball does not return back in the air, if all the energy is lost, then of course the coefficient of restitution is zero, the ratio of the final to initial energy is zero, and the coefficient of restitution squared is zero as well. But if it bounces back up to two meters, then the ratio of the final height to the initial height is going to be 2 divided by 16, or 1 8. That means that ratio for the kinetic energies before and after, or after to before, will be 1 8, or 0 0.125. If it goes back up 4 meters, that's 4 divided by 16, which will be a quarter. I think I'm running out of room here, so let me write right here, 1 2 5. So this will be 0 0.25, or a quarter. Matter of fact, I think it'd be better if I just use fractions. So that would be 1 8, this would be 1 quarter, this would be 3 8, this would be 1 half. When it bounces back up to 8 meters and it started 16, that means it lost half its energy or it retained half of its energy. When it goes up 10 meters, that would be 5 8, 3 quarters of 12 meters, at 14 meters would be 7 8. And when it bounces all the way back up to the same height that it started, it will be a perfectly elastic collision. All the energy was restored back into the object, and then we realized that the ratio of the final to initial kinetic energy would be 1. No energy was lost in that case. We also realized that the coefficient of, of restitution squared is equal to the ratio of those energies. We know that this will also be 1 8, 1 quarter, 3 8, 1 half, 5 eighths, 3 quarters, 7 eighths, and 1. And then here you realize that 1 minus c squared is the energy lost in the collision. So 1 minus 0, that's 1. That means all the energy is lost in the collision. 1 minus 1 is 0. That means 0 of the energy is lost. So this would be the fraction of energy lost, I would say, right? So that would be the fraction of the energy lost during the collision. That may be a better way to say it. What about the coefficient of restitution? Notice that these numbers here form a linear function between the height that it goes up to after the collision and the amount of energy that was restored in the object. But when we talk about the coefficient of restitution, here we notice that there's no linear function. So if we take the square root of 1 8, so it would be 0.125, take the square root, that would be 0 0.35, take 1 quarter, the square root gives us 0 0.5, 3 8, 3 divided by 8, take the square root, we get 0 0.61, and the square root of this would be 0 0.707, 5 eighths, that would be 5 divided by 8, take the square root, we get 0 0.79. 3 quarters, that would be 0 0.866. And uh, when we take 7 divided by 8, take the square root, we get 0 0.94 and 1. So notice that the coefficient restitution doesn't give us that linear relationship between the final and initial kinetic energies before and after the collision. We have to square the coefficient restitution to get that linear relationship. And again, only if we are in the, what we call the center of mass reference frame, that's really important. We'll see some examples where the center of mass is not going to be fixed like it is here on the ground. There's going to be some differences that we need to note. But anyway, I'm hoping that this again will give us some more clarity of what we mean by the coefficient restitution. 
the relationship between it and the change or difference in the kinetic energies. And notice how we have to square that coefficient restitution to get that linear relationship between the energy before and after the collision. And that's how it's done.